Hello, everyone, and welcome to this conversation presented by White House Custom Color. Are you trying to mute me? No, it's just real loud. And I, can't I sold Amazon, but it was $25. <laughs> listening to listen, not listening to respond. Yes. Oh, thank you for that. See, this is what I wanted to talk to you about. Today. Okay, I wanted to get to the what did you want to talk? Because this is my fourth <laughs> appearance on this conversation, which I am incredibly grateful to be considered. I think I, officially it's your fifth. Is it? I did. Okay. Well, I, well, it does not matter. I've been, you, did I, a, you did a COVID one too. Remember the little the short COVID right. one? Well, the point Jed is, is that well, uh, yeah. I have, I have a, I have a strong suspicion that your audience is really sick and tired of the sound of my voice. No, 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 there's no such thing as, as uh, oversaturation with Gary Hughes. That oh, geez, exist. Louise. All right. But you, all right. So you posted something the other day. I, I have it pulled up. I read it again today. Um, and it's funny. Uh, one of the comments right away was, oh man, this makes my eyes a little blurry. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. that's kind of what, that's kind of what happened to me the first time I, I saw the post and you're in your holding one of your little girls real close. That's the three-year-old company. with glasses. That's Josie. Yeah, I made that assumption actually, when you were talking uh, and you're giving her, you're giving her kind of a kiss on the head or you're comforting her because she hurt herself at the beach. Um, and you, and you started talking about, you start off by saying, I hate carrying a camera with me during family time. Yes, I do. I, well, I hate carrying a camera all the time, to be fair. <laughs> like I don't, well, I, I like, I don't even like taking pictures with my phone. I, I mean, I like, I like the genre I work in. And, but we, we, we can, we can get into it, but I think it's a common problem, right? Like no, but a lot it is of a common problem. It is. Right. And I think the way that you presented it um, was really honest. And I think it really, re really resonates with a lot of people. It resonates mm. with me and I'm not a photographer, but I, I see it so often, both with my wife, of course. And then I hear about it. People talk about this all the time. You mean and that then, Vicky doesn't bring a full camera and lighting setup with her everywhere she goes for your kids? No, but do you know what she does every uh, time? Regret should it? I bring my camera? <laughs> yes. Should I bring my? She asks me, "Should I bring my camera?" And As I if you're the say, fulcrum of that decision making, you know what I mean? It's like you have to make up. Now it's your fault because you told her not to. <laughs> well, but see, okay, but see, there's that's part of the thing. She doesn't want. She doesn't even want to be responsible for making that decision herself. Now, is she wanting you to know, to, is she, does she think she wants you to tell her that it's okay not to, or does she want you to talk her into it? Because the, what, is yeah. the, what is the problem here? What are we talking no, about? That's Gary, that's the problem because it's, I don't know if it's either one of those things. I always give her the same exact, I used to give her various answers depending on my mood and then my perception of wherever I thought her mood was, which is a waste of time. You know, that was like 20, 20 years ago. But over the years, I have discovered that there's only one answer that makes any sense whatsoever to give her when she says, should I bring my camera? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> For real. Yeah. It's, I, the, uh... it's the only answer that will suffice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I have no idea. You mm -hmm. need, this decision is yours and yours alone because I have no idea whether or not you should. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Oh, and, I, and I don't think, and I don't think, the, I don't think the question can be answered. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about, you call it the hobby paradox. Yes. The hobby paradox. Yeah. Went to your YouTube channel, <laughs> watched the video. It's a fascinating video. I think you have some decent solutions and I, I, and I think there are times where those solutions, you might as well just throw them out the window. Also true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is. It is a solution that works sometimes. Well, the, right. 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 You know, the hobby yes. paradox, the hobby paradox is, is, is thus when you take mm -hmm. most of us started in photography as hobbyists one way or another, mm -hmm. we did it for the joy of it. And you I remember, <clears throat> well, you know, right. some people still do. Yeah, no, I mean, I do. <laughs> You know, but right, like right. that that's the hobby paradox. The hobby paradox is when you take something that you love and that you do for the joy of it. If you are of an entrepreneurial spirit, if you say one of those people who say, I want to make my life uh, about my my work, my work life about doing something that I enjoy. And not everybody is like that, but for photographers, it's so common. It's it just makes the most sense. 
I like doing right. this. I have to have right. a job. Why don't I take this thing that I like and make it my job? And it seems right. such a natural thing. But yeah. trying to make that hobby, that passion into a job, it, it has the, the, the byproduct of, if not properly managed, taking you away the joy out of the thing that you used to love. It can make right. you it can make you hate it if done well yes. and well managed, but it, it's almost like having kids, right? So uh, somebody told me <laughs> once, whenever you have kids, your marriage takes a hit. Your marriage takes a hit because you can't pay as much attention to each other as a couple, as right? a partnership. That's anymore, true. Right. That's true. So whenever you take something that you love and you turn it into your job, that love is going to take a hit. Mm. that love is going to get knocked down a peg because it, it's about putting food on the table now and paying for yeah. 529 plans. And it's no longer about, I feel like doing this. I'm inspired to do this to the point right. where I know many photographers who say, I'm not picking up a camera without getting paid a lot of money for it. Yep. Happens all the time. Hap and, 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 and that's okay. Right? And you can't dispute that. You can't right. say, you know, it doesn't sound very inspired but it sounds very sensible, right. you know? Um, well, what I like about it is that it's honest. Yeah, I'm all for honesty. You know? At the same time, that is a person whose love for the, the craft has been diminished by the business of it. Of course. You know? And, and yeah. that's and the that's thing that, that I struggle with. I'm, I'm a pretty high volume photographer compared to some. I don't do the, I shoot 30 sessions a year for, you know, uh -huh. $5,000 a piece photographer. Right. I, I, you know, right. I, I shot, I shoot, I'll shoot like 12, 12 headshot and branding sessions this week, you know, and I'll right. do it again next week. You know, I'm shooting right. with not including my high volume clients. I'm shooting 200, 250 sessions a year in the studio. And that's not including events in high volume. And so if anybody has the right to, to be burnt out, it's, it's me, right? Like I, you're, you know, sh you're shooting a lot. Yeah. Pre pandemic, we shoot about 5,000 people a year. Like, you yeah. know, that's adults, not like when I say right. volume, I mean like headshots at conventions and, and, and large right. companies and stuff like that. And so, right. you know, and it takes a lot of energy to photograph people. It really does. And I think there's a, there's a distinct difference there. Landscape photography is soothing. It's cathartic. You know, it's like you get up and you put on your vest with all the pockets on it. You know, and, and you and you and you go out there, and then you know, you, it, it, I I think so. At least it's relaxing to me. I've never tried to make a living at landscape photography. I imagine that's pretty difficult. But you know, I, deal, the more people you come into contact with, you have to give each person to do your job well a portion of your energy, of your of of your of your gas, of your fuel that day. You have to give each yeah. Each person takes a little bit of you. And so if I photograph five, six sessions in a day, which is not, you know, abnormal, I, I got home and I was like, oh, I didn't really do that much when I think about it, you know, um, but I'm exhausted as if yeah. I, as if I'd been, you know, working out or, you know, yeah. I don't know, it's, it's mentally, it's a lot of energy. And so being a parent is very similar. You're, you're constantly giving your essence, your energy. Why do you think... <laughs> It ages you so much. Well, look at our beards, bro. <laughs> look at the beards. It's 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 exhausting. You know, it's valuable. It's worth it. It's a worthy pursuit. But mm -hmm. you know, it is it, it is constantly taking pieces of you uh, all day long. Every little thing, and you know, like from the you just sit down to watch TV, and from the other room, somebody goes, "Daddy, I need you to wipe my butt." And then that, yeah. <laughs> you know, just takes a little chunk out yeah. of your soul. And then in the oh, other it room, does. and then it's, yeah. you know, your kid, it's like, but she got more milk than me. And that takes a little piece out of your soul. And then it's, you know, like, daddy, <laughs> come play, come play cards with me. And you're like, oh, that takes a little piece out of your soul. Cause I just worked all day. So like it's kid, having kids come home and you're clocking back into a totally other career, which is trying to raise humans and to make them at least I think this is what your goal should be is to make humans who contribute to society and make the world a better place, who give more than they take. You know, we have enough takers in the world. And so that is about engagement and that's difficult. And if you're already exhausted and then, so you combine those two things together, you take your, your, your passion and your love of the, of the thing yeah. that you do now for a living, which hurts the passion, that thing. And then you get home and then you, you go, well, I want to do what I do, which is you can't turn off that you can see light and see moments happening. You know, you're just too tired or couldn't be bothered to do something about it. And I, and I struggle mightily with that with the guilt of it. 
Well, and, is it a curse then? I mean, it's a blessing and a curse in a, to a degree, because how many times are you seeing moments and not capturing them? Uh, right. I and, mean, that's the more moments than you can even imagine. All, all the time. Constantly. All the time. Right. But like, that's only... the thing for a photographer. They do, you don't, you don't want to see moments and not capture it or de- not have the ability to capture. I think it depends on, on what you do. Yeah. Um, but depends on the, the type of photographer because you know, photography attracts all kinds. It, it, sometimes it's for the very, very technical, like you can get the ones with, with, without what I would consider sort of the artist's soul that need to create, but people who just like gear and the technical, and they like to talk about mega pixies and, yes. and, and, you know, stacks, yeah. sensors and, you know, scanning and, you know, that, you know, they're just, they're just that, that it, it attracts those people, but it also yeah. attracts the people that are like, how do you turn this thing on? I just want to make something beautiful. And, right. and, 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 and a whole plethora, a plethora, of different people in plethora. between plethora. Would you say I have a plethora of pinatas? Um, <laughs> yeah. Si, sí, el guapo. Um, so, you, you know, the, uh, you know, so I, I, I don't want to like paint with too broad a brush and say photographers this, photographers that. My experience is that I struggle with not wanting to take pictures, even of my own children when I'm not working. And I also struggle with when the times that I don't, the times that I, I leave my, my camera at home and I don't do these things, I'll be standing there in a, in a beautiful mm-hmm. place watching this thing happen and then miss it. Mm-hmm. And, but see, the fact that you, but the fact that you formulate that as missing it is right. what I'm getting that. that. Like, that's the curse. Because me, as someone that's not a photographer, We'll see the same thing. And I don't think to myself that I missed it. I think to myself that I got to see it. Correct. But now, a photographer, this is, yes, but a photographer will be like, oh no, I wasn't. Cause th- here's why the, I don't know is the most like the ease, the best answer for me, because there are times when she decides, my wife decides not to bring her camera to said event. And we're in the beautiful place. And she's just thinking to herself, I wish I had my camera. So she yes. had my, I can't believe I didn't yes. bring my camera. Yes. And then she'll look at me. Why didn't you tell me to bring my camera? I said, I don't know. Which right? is worse, which is worse somehow, Jed. I think you got to do better. I think you got to come up with another answer. But you, you tell, if you come, if you have one, I am down. I'm going to, gonna, before the end of this episode, I'm going to give you the answer. Okay. Oh, and good. my brain, my, my, my subconscious is already at work on it. But before There's we do. carrot. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to stay to the end, I'm going to give Jed the answer to that question. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Now, here's what I want to get into because I've seen okay. comment comments on my YouTube video, um, and yes. maybe you can put a link to that somewhere. It, it's it's actually it's honestly probably my least popular, my least watched YouTube video, but I'm the proudest of it because it's one I really wanted to make. Um, but anyway, that that being said, there's a lot of comments on it. Well, a yeah, lot. it has a high engagement because I think it I think the topic resonated with with, with some people. Well, but you know exactly. It, you know, I'm, you know, if you get videos that have tens of thousands of views and then you have one that you're really proud of that has like 50, you know, I'm actually, it doesn't, I'm not really bothered about it. I, I'm just glad I made it. But anyway, so mm-hmm. here's, here's what we're talking about. The comments on Facebook and the comments on Instagram and the comments on YouTube have gone, you know, they've been pretty thematic where people are like, I really needed to hear this or they want, they share with me yeah. how they deal with the same problem. And then uh, there are also the people who they, who have said they they think they're giving you this really sage advice. They think they're they're really helping you out by saying, just put down your camera and experience the moment. And this is the problem. The problem isn't that you're wrong. You mean you're running into people online that give you advice? I'm frankly I'm shocked. You know, unsolicited. Well, first of all, again, I, I you know I was having a conversation with a friend earlier today, and 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 I told him. You're, if you're putting your business out there on the internet, you ha- okay. you op- you open yourself up for people to say whatever they want to, and I I, I don't get mad about that. You know, okay. um, I I still think that rules of decency, politeness, and helpfulness should apply, but they don't, and there are no rules. So who cares? Being mad at somebody responding to what you post on the internet is like celebrities being mad when a paparazzi takes their picture. Then okay, then mm. give back your fame and your money and your success and go live a quiet life or shut the hell up because no one com- mm. no one cares about your complaining. I'm sorry. Mm. You know, this mm. is the this is the world you have thrust yourself willingly into. Here's the thing about that piece of advice. It was given, I believe, with good intent, 
many times, put down your camera and experience the moment. But this is, this is the problem. For a photographer who feels the urge to make, to create, that that's the only thing that scratches their itch, taking the picture, capturing that moment is experiencing the moment. Mm. That is how we experience the well, moment. Well, that's what I was getting at, I think. And, and yeah. If I, I abs- yeah, well, I wanted to say it because I'm the guest and you're the host. So I <laughs> wanted to say it first. <laughs> You said it in a better way. You did. Yeah, you I did. have that because of the time, because I talk fast and this is my technique. I talk fast and I throw a lot of jokes out. And then when I slow down and I say something really Ooh. emphatically, it really resonates because you go, People oh my God. lean forward. Yeah, yeah. You, gotta, you gotta do the lean in. But no, I, I mean that honestly, it's like you can still experience moments without your camera. I'm not saying that you can't. Right. But if you have that urge to make, there mm-hmm. is always a little piece inside of you that feels a twinge of loss when you don't grab you don't it, capture it. Yeah. And, and, and that's just the nature of the beast. It's, it's the same thing for anybody who has a trained mind, a trained eye, a, 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 you know, or, and a tra- you know, a, a set of skills. It's the reason why if you've ever worked with anybody who's, who works in law enforcement, <laughs> they, they never will sit with their back to the door of a restaurant. You know, it's just right. how we're built. It's just how That's we're how trained. Work. It's how we work. It's part of who we are. It's why when you know, you're know you driving down the neighborhood and if you're in the car with your buddy who's a pool guy, he's looking at all the pumps and the fences and the yep. screens and seeing the state of all the... Like, you just can't... Once you see light, once you see you know, the, 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 the moments happening and you know how to grab them and you train your mind to look for them, you can't turn that switch off. You know, you can't stop seeing it. And so it's not that anything bad's going to happen if you don't, because here's the honest truth. Minutes go by constantly without you grabbing them. When I'm at work, I'm here at the studio talking to you. And my, my, my house is actually about 200 yards away. So I live really, really close to my studio. Yeah. My three daughters are over there doing things and I'm missing it. I'm missing, you know, it, what it is, it's, it's sort of a, a reflection to the fact that I'm missing that, you know, I'm missing lots of things in their lives all the time. And when you look back and you'd be like, oh my God, look how much they've grown this year or oh, oh, look how much has changed. There is a constant, you know, uh, feeling of loss and, and fear and, and things that you're dealing with existentially that's going on in the back of your mind all the time. And yeah. photography is almost a coping mechanism for the existential crisis. It's trying to capture those moments in time and to freeze them so that we can remember them because our mind's imperfect and time is unstoppable. And so, you know, there's, it's just a magnific, <laughs> it's just a magnification of our, of our, of our dread that every human being experiences and we all deal with it in different ways some people turn to their faith and some people turn to you know some people turn to to teaching some people turn to drugs and alcohol some people turn some people turn to their canon some people turn to their cameras some people you know like (laughs) the reason like so you know it's it's very easy to argue the fact that you say we're all pretty much just figuring out how to kill time until we die (laughs) (laughs) and that's morbid but here's the thing here is the thing is that time is valuable because it's finite. And so, you know, we are all responsible to be, you know, our own visual historians and and responsible to show our kids the things that they won't remember. I mean, how many times have you looked back at pictures of yourself as a kid, assuming you had someone who loved you enough to take them, uh, just throw a little there's guilt like, out there. There's like, there's like seven of them. Yeah, I don't have many. I, yeah, I have, you know, I'm the, my parents are photographers. And I don't have mm-hmm. any. Think about that. I have, a, I have a couple of pictures from when I was two or three. I have a picture from middle school that my mom carried around in her wallet forever. And then, I, I mean, I have no, and I have pictures from family weddings and stuff, but there really aren't, aren't more than maybe a dozen pictures of me as mm-hmm. a child with large swaths of my childhood not included. Right. Right. And, and my parents are photographers. So I would say that like, you know, I, I, here we're, we're going to get into another tangent here briefly, and this is that you know we we fight so much about the quality 
of the photos about about doing all this stuff to organize to plan to orchestrate to come up with the concept to do all this stuff and it slows it down or we put it off to lose weight or all these things that we do and we're missing it there are people who like god bless the people that would just go to the picture people or jc penny or whoever every six months just to get a, a cheap family portrait because you know and what ha and have it yeah the quality is irrelevant compared to not having it at all right right and right. so we get up our own butts as photographers a little bit about well you need to hire a real professional somebody who's gonna you know give you a frame made out of unicorn fur or something like that. Like we, you know, we get so hung up on it. We get so yeah. up our own butts because we are the artists or whatever. The fact mm -hmm. of the matter is that even if you're taking pictures of your kids with just your phone or whatever, you know, that's fine. Um, as long as you, as long as they have them and as long as they're somewhere where they can enjoy them instead of backing up to a cloud somewhere that you don't even know right. how to access, Right. You know, hence right. the hence the gigantic printer here behind me. Um, right. But you know, printing that work, I think, is incredibly important. So we we have started the process of sort of covering our house with photos. And you know what I've I've discovered about my taste in photography is I am a studio portrait photographer, born, bred, trained, and living that studio photographer life every day. I hate studio portraits of my kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they're contrived. I think that they, you yeah. know, I, I like them of other people's kids. I like other people's work and I admire, but of yeah. my kids and my life and my taste is, I, I could really, I couldn't care less about having everybody in a black t-shirt on a black background, which I actually well, have that hanging up in my house, by the way. I do, sure. I, I have that picture, but I, you know, I, 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 and I think they're fine. I don't think there's anything, but like my taste is now all of a sudden I've realized that it's those moments that's what I want all over my house. I want my kids to have the memories of the time that we we climbed to the type of the top of the Eiffel Tower together from the outside. It was wild though. The time that <laughs> the time that we went to Paris, you know, yeah. and that I didn't have a camera. You know, you know uh, that kind of that that kind of that describes one of your solutions, really, to, to me, in that one of your solutions. And I don't want to give away the farm here. People should watch your YouTube video, but your one of your solutions to combat the hobby paradox is to shoot in a different way. Yeah. And you're a, you're a studio headshot portrait photographer that when you do take your camera, you're not thinking along those lines. Your mind's in a completely different frame and you're shooting photojournalistically. That's of right. Your, of your kids. Yeah, I, I, I want to make it. It's a couple of reasons. The first thing is, I think that, you know, we, we've been doing this thing for years with our kids where, you know, Julie will make an appointment on the studio calendar and they'll come up to the studio and we, we make it like it's a production and they tear my studio apart <laughs> and they make a mess. And it stresses me out so, so bad. And you know what? <laughs> But, and we've got them and I've made little albums of their first year and stuff like that. Like it's, it's, it's important that we have it and it's documented in an, in, in a, in a particular fashion. I get that, but I've never enjoyed doing those sessions and I will continue to do those um, or hire somebody who does enjoy them. But right. what I have found is shooting in a way that I don't get to that I, that I like. And so I just take, uh, take my, my small camera. I have a, EO, a Canon RP, which is a really, it's an entry level, little full frame and a single fixed 35 millimeter lens and no lights, no fuss, uh, you know, and, and I actually even, <laughs> and, and that's what I bring. I bring a really light gear. My intention is to just be able to shoot, put it back in the diaper bag or whatever, what I'm not using it. And, and just when I see something, I can grab it and I can determine my own level of involvement. But the point is that I get to play in a genre that I don't normally play in. So I'm not tired of doing it already because if they come into the studio and I have to set up the lights, do all this stuff, I'm doing the same thing I've done so many times already this week and I have to do it one more time and you know interrupt my normal course of events and just do the, you know, do the thing that I'm honestly by the end of the week kind of tired of doing. And so, you know, that I'm looking forward to not having to do for a couple of days over the weekend. But it's when you do it in a completely different way. I've just got this little camera with a fixed lens. It's super light. I'm shooting all available light. And I get to shoot just naturally relaxed with no pressure and in a way that doesn't feel like I'm at work.
And, and so I create a different way of shooting. I have a sense that I know what your answer might be for me. Well, since this is our 47th wife. conversation on your show, I'm pretty sure you know me pretty well by now. <laughs> um, is it yes? Is the answer yes? The answer is but, yes. But, 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 but is the answer yes, but, but not your Mark IV with your 70 to 200, you know? And Let me ask you this. It's, does, what is, does Vicky have just like a play camera? Um, no, she, not what I would consider. Not like your RP. She doesn't have something like that. Even that, I mean, there are tons and tons of these out there. You know, right. we, there's also the new shoes effect, which I don't know if you've ever heard the new shoes effect. It's like we've all experienced the new shoes effect when you would when your parents would take you to the mall for a set of new shoes and you put yes. the new shoes on. And the first thing you do is you start tearing ass down the mall going, I can run faster. <laughs> My fast shoes. Yeah. 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 Of course. So having something new and different to be excited about is a good is a good catalyst. But having something that's just no pressure to toss in your bag. I got for my wife, I got a, the the Canon M50. And it's just a, you know, it's, it's not a pro level camera, although it does have some really great features. It's got mm -hmm. the flip out screen, good for video. It's got the eye tracking mm -hmm. and the whole nine yards, but it's really small. It fits in her diaper bag in her go bag with the kids. And she just always has it. And she's, she just takes hundreds of photos of just the normal stuff they're doing every day with no pressure. And it's way, way better, more printable more specifically mm. than pictures from the phone. Um, but right. so like, you know, my, my first piece of advice is not necessarily to go spend more money, but I would say if you don't have a dedicated play camera, play even camera. a play camera, yeah. you're not going to play a lot of the time. You know, if you're yeah. putting in your hands, the same thing that you have in your hands all week when you're working, it's still going to feel like work. And, and I well, I do think that it's interesting that you, that you call it a play camera. Cause a lot of this, a lot of this involves mindset. Yes, a right? hundred. No, uh, this completely, a hundred percent involves mindset. It's, right. it's 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 doing it differently, looking at it differently, and learning to play again with photography. You've 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 taken photography from a play to work, and right. now you're missing out on what you used to do when you were playing. Now, this is, there are some people this isn't a problem for because they have an inexhaustible font of 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 just playfulness and photography. They're just living their best <laughs> life. But for except for those six people, the rest of us yeah, <laughs> need to yeah. learn how to play again. And you know what's really cool about this? The side effect is is that the play informs your work. It hmm. reinvigorates your work. Now I'm not saying that because far be it for me to tell anybody what to do with their life. Although I'm, I'm totally gonna, cause you know, you're listening to me, so it's whatever, but like <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I am not a person who sets up a lot of styled shoots and personal shoots where I'm doing a big to do, like even for image yeah. competitions and stuff like that. I always, it's always client work. It's always yeah. like commission yes. work. Um, right. because I just, I, I'm a father of three small children. I'm running a business where I shoot relatively medium to high volume. And mm -hmm. so th I do not have the time or energy to be putting together all of these big projects. Now, um, I, I probably could, if I wanted to, but honestly, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> but right. when you learn to, and, and those type of projects, when I do do them, they definitely reinvigorate a little bit, but I'm a lot less right. likely to, to like go to the prop store and buy 60 foot feather wings and a parachute dress and then, sure. and hire a model and go through all that damn trouble. Like it's, mm -hmm. that's to me, that still feels like work, mm -hmm. you know? So when I play, I get to play in a completely different way. It's like the difference between driving your Toyota Corolla back and forth to your office and driving a go-kart with your kids. Mm. And mm -hmm. that's fun. It's still driving, but it's fun driving. They're both driving, but they're not. They're the not same. the same thing. You have mm -hmm. to accept the fact that photography in your business has become a totally different version of itself when you try to make it your career. But that doesn't mean that the other thing no longer exists. But doesn't, you get, don't you think, and don't you think that part of the definition of playing is that it is, is that it is on your terms? Like it looks uh, like, it looks like how you want it to look or not, or, or maybe you'll never use the pictures, but you're playing right. all that. Right. Right. Like but you're, you're doing it the way that you want to do it. Exactly. That's exactly the point. And, and no, actually you don't want to do it. 
<laughs> like that's the voice. Like initially you don't want to do it. Sometimes, sometimes the, the beginning of the process is a lot like working out, you know, yeah. nobody ever gets up in the morning, you know, who needs to lose a few pounds and goes, I'm so excited to jog right now. You know, oh, boy. I, oh man, I am going to eat, I'm going to, I'm going to eat this protein bar and I'm going to jog. No, you, you go running and you, and you eat a couple of healthy, you know, raw meals. And after a yeah. couple of days, you start to feel like a million bucks, even if you don't look yep. great yet. And so, yep. you know, it's, it's a process. And then once you get into it, you've changed your lifestyle to be a healthier person overall. And it's not such a pain in the butt once you get it rolling. And so this is a thing that you're going to play and you're going to learn to play. It's a learning process and it's going to change you as you do it. And so now, now the benefit is, is incalculable, not in just your personal feeling, but you, 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 you don't have any targets to hit. You don't have mm -hmm. any goals. The only goal is to play and to feel better and to learn to enjoy the thing for, for it's just, it's, it's pure enjoyment. And I think it's, I think it's incredibly important and I still don't always do it, but I still do it a lot, you know, now, and it's, and it's, it's, it's rewarding. And now my house has started to get covered with these beautiful black and white pictures of my kids playing and I'm playing with them. There's this terrific, uh, kids show, which if I don't mention this, my, my, my daughters who I'll force to listen to this later would be, you know, would be disappointed if there's a, there's a terrific show out of Australia. It's a cartoon. It's called Bluey. And uh, I don't know if you, I've heard of that. Oh my God. Let me, it's not going to be a Bluey commercial. I promise. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to, oh, but it, it's a, for parents, especially with younger children, this is an incredibly beautifully done show that speaks to the parents in a real voice. And so it's, uh, it's, it's just brilliant. It's on Disney. I was told I think. it was the antithesis. It, I was told it's the antithesis of Caillou. Yes, it is. Caillou is a flaming hot pile of garbage. Screw that kid. <laughs> and you know, the but Bluey, someone, someone described Bluey to the, like, like this to me, there was like, it's like, so he was, he was trying to, uh, it, like interrupt, his, his parents, maybe from talking to somebody else, I'll get this wrong, but I think the concept will be right. I guarantee and you I've seen the episode. <laughs> they stopped him and they were like, no, 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 we're, we're having this conversation now. So it's, it's not, it's not, it's rude for you to interrupt essentially. So if, if you want to talk to me or if you have something to say, that's fine. But what you should do, what you can do is just come up to me and put, put your hand on my arm. And then I'll know that you have something to say. And you won't you won't be interrupting the conversation. Hmm. Does that sound familiar, or am I making that? Sounds up? like something I said. <laughs> <laughs> but so. they, but it's it's like the the opposite of something like Caillou, where he comes in uh, and screaming, and oh, he, yeah. you know, then everything's just always a mess. And, no. and it's just like with Bluey, it's like you will see good ways to actually parent and discipline that's I, effective. And I, I, I will, I will tell you this is that I, I, I aspire to be as good a parents as they are. There you go. That's what that I'm show. talking about. And it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's about being engaged, but this, this one particular mm. episode that always comes to mind when I think about play is that um, they, there was this uh, event in the backyard where all the, a, a couple of the guys in the neighborhood, they call it stump fest. And so they basically, they just get together and they drink beers and then they, uh, well, they probably don't drink beers in the show, but you get the impression. And yeah. they're, they're removing all the old tree stumps by digging them out and turning them over. And they're all really excited about it. And they're sweating and they're, they're wrestling around. They're just being dudes. And the kids are using one of the old stumps to have like a tea party or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so there's, it becomes conflict who's interrupting who. And so mm. the mom has to teach Bluey that her dad and his friends are playing. She doesn't get it that this is how adults play. And she watches uh. them for a second and she goes, oh, they are playing. They're playing and their play is as important to them as mine is to me. Oh, you know, nice. and, and so I take this. So I'm playing instead of going to the, the beach with my kids and I'm parenting and I'm safeguarding against drowning or whatever and all that stuff, right. you know, that's what you do. Right. I'm playing. I'm not just yeah. going there and being, you know, I, cause this is the thing that I do to play. I've somewhere along the line, I lost play play became have a few beers and talk about sports. That's not play. 
somewhere along the line, play became sit and watch five episodes of something on Netflix. Play has become synonymous with, with rest and relaxation instead of mm. separate play is That's not relaxation. Point. Right. At right. some point as adults, we stop playing, you know, and, and I, and, and I think play is incredibly important for everyone. It's we have to you know, learn how to play again. If you're wondering, you why, learn how to play. Yes. If you're wondering why your life is potentially so joyless, what do you do to, to, to evoke joy, to get your bodies? And I'm not talking, you know, mystical crap here. I'm talking about right. getting your body into something, getting your mind into something, getting huh. those, you know, getting those, those chemicals flowing in your brain and dopamine and all those other things. Like, what are yeah. you, what are you doing? Is it like, right. Well, I work all day and then I come home and I drink wine and I watch The Bachelorette. That's not play. That's relaxation. Right. Your body and right. your brain need that too. But you right. need psychologically, some point becoming an adult, it's no longer okay to play. Huh. Well, this turned into something I did not expect. Isn't that always the case? <laughs> <laughs> With you, it is. <laughs> oh, man. I and love it. And so I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm not only learning to reinvigorate something that brings me joy, but I am also learning to play because I'm not going to go out there. I'm just not going to go out there and play basketball with my buddies. You know, I'm just not a, I'm not an outdoorsy sportsy guy. You know, right. I exercise enough to keep my doctor from getting mad at me. And that's, mm. that's like the level I, I, it's like, you have to get your heart rate up twice a day and you have to exercise three times a week. I was like, I'm going to do that and nothing else. <laughs> but what really turns me on emotionally in gets that kind of joy flowing. And yeah. I have forgotten, but at some point that used to be taking pictures. Yeah. And I, yeah. I'm not saying that I don't enjoy taking pictures for my job. I have, I have the coolest job in the world. I have, I have a 200 yard commute. I have a, a, a studio that's just like a perfect workspace for me. I have yeah. everything that I could possibly want. I don't have to wear, you know, a polo and pleated khakis and wear a name tag. I get to work on my terms. I work with mostly pretty terrific, incredible people. But yeah. no matter how much you enjoy your job, it's still work. Mm -hmm. And so play, where's, where's the play? When do Learn you learn to play? Man, I love it. When do you play? And that's, I guess, I guess that's it. I think I'm spent. How are you? Well, I think it's well, it's, it's well said. And it's, I think it's the perfect thing to end on because it's the question. Well, it's the question that I want people to ask themselves after, after hearing this, like, what, what does it look like for you to play? Do you need to learn to play? Um, mm, I would say that almost everybody should say yes to that. Yes, we, we well, need to learn to play. Well, and it's not R&R. &R. I love the distinction that you made there. It, play is not rest and relaxation. It's not because I like to lay back and watch a good movie as anyone else. But mm. that's not play. That's not it's play. It's not. No. Okay. okay. I have an answer for you. All right. I'm ready for the official answer. So the next time that Vicky asks you if she should bring her camera uh -huh. and you should ask her, well, do you want to play? Oh, <laughs> I see what you did there. So well done. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> okay. I will. That's what, I, do you want to play? Do you feel like playing? Then bring it. Okay. If you don't feel like playing, okay. then don't bring it. Okay. Oh man, you are, you are a master. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff you're just so good uh yeah well all right hey, do, well, do do the do the formal stuff and tell people where they can find you and give your information out i know it's sure. official gary it's gary hughes official gary if, hughes official on instagram yeah right? it's gary hughes official on instagram that's my personal instagram it's where this whole thing started with this particular yes. topic um, my studio instagram is at hughes fioretti f-i-o-r-e-t-t-i -T -T -I. hughes fioretti is the name of my business the website's hughesfioretti.com i'm also on youtube and just research for gary hughes official 
and you can find the video. It's called, uh, do you hate why, why photographers hate taking photos, the hobby paradox. Yeah. And that's yeah. uh, on there too. And I, I put content on there, you know, as I can, I'm raising a family, running a business every couple of weeks, I put up a video and I'm not great at it yet, but I'm getting there and I promise I'll keep <laughs> trying. Um, and yeah, check me out on, uh, I guess coming up later in the year, I'll be at uh, WPPI in August and that's imaging right. and imaging USA in January in DC, excited to be with other humans again. This is a, a <laughs> yeah. You know, it's really, really cool. I can't wait. I cannot wait for them both. Oh man, I'm going to hug you so hard when I see you. I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm going to jump on you. I'm going to intertwine our beards and rub our faces together. I'm looking forward to it. Thank uh, you for joining me. Thank you for your time and your, and your wisdom, my friend, Gary Hughes. Thanks for having me, dude. Appreciate you. Hey guys, thanks for watching this conversation presented by White House Custom Color on YouTube. Be sure to check out our other content and click that subscribe button right there. Right. <laughs> right there. It's there somewhere. <laughs>